Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tong Zhou Wang from MIT CISO. So today we've seen some great advances in PyTorch about the JIT, the name tensor, and mixed precision training, and so many other things. And today I want to talk about another aspect in PyTorch that has been improved significantly in the last two releases. That is the, if this works, OK. Right. That is the PyTorch data loading pipeline. So the way I want to structure my five minutes is I want to give a brief introduction about how the components within PyTorch data loading, as well as the several updates we've made. So first, let's take a look at the three components in PyTorch data loading. Um, one of the core objects in PyTorch data loading is the data set. A data set is essentially a Python object that represents a collection of data samples. And the way we do this in PyTorch is that we have this uh, map-like interface where you give a single index and you obtain a data sample out of it. And if you look at this code segment and ignore the weird indentation issue, and it takes an index and reads a file and basically returns it. And the next component is the sampler. So now we have a data set that takes an index and feeds out a data sample. But we also need to specify which sample we want. So the sampler is essentially what we use to specify the data loading order. And it is, can be viewed as a stream of data set indices. Um, here is a simple example about how you can implement a sampler that just feeds out sequential index from 0 to m minus 1. And finally, probably the most important one that you will use is the data loader object. The data loader object is the entry point of the data loading pipeline. And it combines the data set as well as the sampler, sampler and also provides functionalities as, such as single and multi-process multi data loading as well as automatic collation into batches. So here, if you take this data loader and specify that batch size equals 4, for example, the, way it, the thing it does under the hood is that every time you ask for data from this data loader, it fetches the next four indices from the sampler as, and individually, one by one, ask the data set to get a data sample from it and collate the list of four samples into a single batch. Am I back? All right, nice. OK, great. Cool. Uh, yeah, so back to data loading. We have these three components in, Py, uh, in PyTorch data loading, the data set, the sampler, and the data loader. And if you, you probably have noticed that there's a, big uh, there's a big constraint in these three objects. That is, the data set only loads one sample at a time. And this could be quite efficient and could potentially add very uh, big overhead if in cases where, say, you're like reading data from a database where you really want to do bulk loading. So the first thing we did is that we relax, relax the constraint and allow you to uh, relax the API so the data set is now not only can handle individual samples, but can also handle loading from the list of indices into batch samples. So this enables essentially bulk loading. So this is a very simple uh, code segment that illustrates how this works. And since everything is like batched indices and batch samples, we also need to update our sampler to return the batch indices at every time. And this is a very simple sampler that just keep returning the list of batch indices. And now the data set, instead of in the get item method, instead of handling a single index, it handles a list of indices. And you can do things like query to a database and return it as a collated sample. Because the data set now natively handles the collation and returns a batch sample, and the data loader doesn't need to do the batching. So we specify batch size equals to none here to signify that to data loader, and everything should just work as is. And additionally, we noticed that there's, there is so much more types of data sets than just like map style data sets. So, uh, so in certain cases, you potentially want your data set to be an infinite data stream or even some logs generated in real time. So in these cases, you might not have like really clear definition between a mapping from indices into data samples, but really you have a stream of data. So this, this is what we call iterable data set. And in this case, it's a trajectory data set. If you're working with robotics or reinforcement learning, uh, you should realize that there are like a lot of algorithms that essentially work on infinite streams of trajectories sampled from the environment. And now, instead of like inheriting from the data set base class, you can inherit from the iterable data set base class and overwrite the iter method 
which essentially yields all the trajectories you want. And by using this interface, it essentially also gives you like finer control of data loading in the sense that your batch size and the data and data order can become data, data dependent. Right. So here I have a uh, simple example where your DB queries could time out. Um, so for example, if you're like a particular shard is bad or uh, in the index is bad or something like that. So you can actually filter your data based on the, uh, the content you get from the query. And you can even do fancier things like mark which indices are bad and so you don't really get to sample them in the next iteration. Cool. Uh, so to recap, um, before we have this like single index to single sample data set, and now we introduce two new types of data sets. One is the batch, the batch style, which allows you bulk loading to enable use cases like querying from a database. And or you can do like uh, data streams, like iterable data sets, where you can even generate the data set from, say, logs from real time or even, uh, I don't know, like uh, from an in internet crawler and stuff like that. So here are like two major improvements we've done to data loading, which hopefully can make data loading more effective and efficient in PyTorch. And thank you all.